Vistal Construction and Development goes under. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at the example of MJM Projects, a construction country co oh, construction company here in Queensland that's trading as Vistal Construction and Development that is now in liquidation. So before we go through the Subby, Subby's United take on it, let's jump to their actual website and have a look. So this is some examples of some of the type of projects that they do. So they look like they're a spec home builder. You know, double story, split level, pretty standard type of product. But there's going to be a lot of, a lot of subbies, a lot of tradies that are a lot of money. That are owed a lot of money. And it's, it's a tough game, guys, because a lot of people don't realize, you know, tradies are small business people. They have to take on a lot of costs. They've got a somewhat more difficult, I'd say, than uh, professional consultants because we cop too. But they also have to buy for all the materials, and that's it's bloody tough. It can ruin, you know, you can lose your whole business over a few jobs that go under. MJM Projects trading as Vistal Construction and Development is in liquidation, as reported in the Courier Mail. Vistal Constructions is in liquidation after stringing out subbies for almost 12 months. They owe over 180 creditors $4 million. 12 months. What's the longest you've been strung out by a builder? Guys, let, let us know in the comments. Do you just cut them off straight away? This is the thing. You've got one job. Oh, just do this other job. You know, and then all of a sudden you're 60, 90 days ahead. Oh, I, you know, I'll pay you once I get paid which is even illegal, but they're all the tricks they, they play on you. You know, some, sometimes it's difficult to, to turn down a client that's been good to you. Maybe you want to help them out, but 12 months. And what they'll do is one person will stop providing them service. Then they'll just go to another one, you know, work with them until they refuse, then go to another one, work with them until they refuse, go to another one, work with them until they refuse. And you can see how you get 180 people owed four million dollars so that from the courier mail vistal constructions is run by director martin graham and was part of the vistal property group it is understood the wider vistal group is unaffected by the liquidation why is that why is the building company in liquidation but the development company why, but why is it that the building company can be in liquidation, but the development company can continue on its merry way? Why isn't the development company forced to pay the creditors? Well, this is how it happens, isn't it, guys? This is just to do with company separation. Vistal first came to our attention in April 2019, and this is from Subbies United, and was the subject of discussion on our own private members forum in July. 2019 for non-payment of accounts so there is little doubt that QBCC would have been aware there were serious financial issues with this company back then so here's the issue guys we've got these regulatory government bodies that are meant to you know provide licenses for the builders to monitor them to make sure they're financially solvent but is that more than just theater performance art to placate the masses that justice will be served or that dodgy builders won't be able to get away with it because we seem to still have these problems appearing over and over. And we'll have a look at the information publicly available from the QBCC from MJM because that's the information that I would have access to as an architect when I'm tendering for builders. I'd ask to copy of their financials. If they don't give you their financials when they're tendering for a job, then you don't work for them or you don't offer them an opportunity to even tender. So any of our members thinking of contracting to them would have benefited from their knowledge that they were not paying their subcontractors in mid 2019. Those subbies have potentially dodged a significant financial hit. I mean, this is the thing. This is a market response here. The subbies United is a market response to this issue of dodgy builders. 
in a way. I mean, you got to pay to join them to get access to it. So this is a bit of a plug. But then again, this is where you get the inside knowledge. You talk to your mates, you talk to other subbies. Who's not paying? Which builders are doing the dodge? Word gets around real quick. Real quick. And here's another thing. There was a, a case recently. Often when you make a payment to a builder, they sign, the builder will sign, the director will sign a statutory declaration saying that they've paid every single subcontractor. Now that's an oath under the Oaths Act that faces jail time. There's a recent case saying that it was unreasonable to expect the director of the business to be on top of every single project and payment. So essentially, those declarations that we're getting them to sign with every bloody contract, every time you pay a builder, are worth absolutely nothing. Completely nothing. More paperwork that's utter BS. So, one giveaway is when a building company changes... What, chances? Chances from one subby to the next on various trades. It's often a sign that the first subby, subby, stubby, was not paid, which was the case here. It's a huge red flag to subbies who know what they're doing and was part of the discussion. On the 22nd of November 2019, the following conditions were put on their QBC license, but it was a little too late once again. So, in November, months after it started happening. So, there'd be a whole lot of people that would get caught up. Would get caught up. MJM Projects is to provide monthly reporting to QBCC by close of business on the 10th of each month, consisting of balance sheet and profit and loss as at the month end date, balance sheet for any related entities owing money to the company as at the month end date, age debitors and creditors listing at the month end date, evidence in writing that the company's creditors are being paid in accordance with agreed terms and conditions, evidence in writing. So, I mean, this is it here. This is exactly what I was talking about. You know, those Stein stat decks, they're, they're worthless, guys. They're utterly worthless. Evidence in writing that there had any agreed repayment arrangements made with creditors are being complied with. ATO portal activity statement for the integrated client and income tax accounts. I mean, QBCC is just rent seekers, just government rent seekers, bureaucrats playing busy, you know. MJM Project Proprietary Limited is to provide copies of any proceedings by any creditors, whether by claim or statutory demand or application to wind up MJM Projects Proprietary Limited is to immediately notify QBCC of any significant changes that may adversely impact its financial position. Well, it's kind of, kind of pointless, isn't it? So, Subbies United tried, are tired of emailing reams of information to the QBCC. Who don't act on it or if they do we never hear back from them other than a cursory thanks john that's not good enough they're a secretive organization and the feeling among a lot of subbies it's that it is uh, to cover their own incompetence well i think it's maybe some of the subbies got to realize that the government ain't going to take care of us anyone and this is just they're, they're rent seekers they're no different to the bloody potato mafia over in western australia that I read about in previous videos. It's all just smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. I've reported, you know, people doing illegal work, unlicensed people to QBCC. Nah, don't care, don't care, don't care. I mean, it's probably just more work, it's hard. So why did MJM projects continue to operate for another seven months? How many subbies and supplies were burnt in that seven month period? Well, here, here's a question I would put to you. Why do we need to pay to get access to company information from ASIC? Shouldn't people be able, if they're, if they're looking at engaging, doing work with this, shouldn't the subby be able to go, okay, and look at the ASIC information, look at any reports that have been made to it, any submissions that have been made to wind up the company, that should all be available for free of charge to every member of the public. And you can see, tradies need to learn. If they're not getting paid, they should be able to freely and easily make a submission. So it goes on public record. And if it's going through QCAT or it's fighting a court case, it should be there. People should be made aware of it. The, the challenge is here, if a company gets into trouble, when they fall over like this, everyone gets burned. So you kind of, you need to tread very lightly because they may be able to work their way out of it and everyone may be okay. 
but if you warn people to not work with them they may not be able to then trade their way out of it and will definitely fall over so that's the risk guys if the QBCC stopped wasting money like were they were alleged to have done in this Channel 7 news item, they may have a better strike rate doing what is important, such as cleaning up this industry. Instead, they make law firms rich while subbies do the us working for builders who clearly do not meet their MFRs and therefore cannot meet their commitments. Well, this comment by the QBCC commissioner with a smug grin is laughable. We do everything that Queenslanders expect us to do to ensure that we are an effective and efficient building and construction regulator. Well, I'll agree with, uh, with John from Subbies United. I think that is certainly quite laughable. Does anyone think anything good at all of the QPCC? <laughs> On a personal level, I've sent the QBCC, and in particular the Commissioner, dozens of emails containing comprehensive details of wrongdoing, but many of these subjects the subjects of these emails are still ripping off subbies. QBCC, I have news for you. This is one hell of a lot more you could do for people in the Queensland industry. It's time to stop the rip-off. Well, I think they can't really do much about us. You know, we're not anti-builder. We support strong builders. Okay, this is about Subbies United, guys. And you can check out their website if you're interested in them. I mean, this isn't a journalist piece. But it's people who are frustrated with a government agency that is funded by government money, which is forcefully taken from people, and they've got, they charge license fees. Yeah. So let, let's have a look. When you do a QBCC search on a builder, now this is what you want to do, a license search. And this is MJM Projects Proprietary Limited. Let's have a look here. I mean, right now, they can't do anything, you know, there's the details, but this isn't, you know, ASIC have got the, you have to pay ASIC to get a confirm any of this information um, so they've been cancelled on the 22nd of january they, they were suspended on the 22nd and the license was renewed so they in 2015 they didn't pay a fee they were suspended and then reactivated in 2020 and here we go you know this is the requirement as we read how many people do you think would go through this in November and have a look at this? I mean, this would be a warning sign. This would be a warning sign. There, if you saw this, this happening. So, but then again, what about all the people before November? For the rest of that year. So there you go. And they can just lie, guys. What do you all think? You know someone who's copped it from these guys? Have you done work with them? What would you, your strategies be to deal with this? Do you think regulation, government paperwork like this is ever going to make a difference? Or do subbies just need to start asking for personal guarantees from the director? You know, if you don't pay me, you'll give me a portion of your house. Maybe if all subbies were trained to do that. We might see a change. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can share the content on social media. That really helps. You can also support us on Patreon or join the channel here on YouTube. We have affiliate links with Amazon, eBay, and Independent Reserve. And we also have PayPal or merch on our own website if you want to support us that way. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Take care, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.